Hello and welcome to the Speaking Archaeologically's lecture on illustration of lithic artifacts. In this lecture, you will learn how to define the various sides and surfaces of a lithic artifact. And then we will talk about illustrating it for archaeological purposes. From a lithic assemblage, you will collect three types of artifacts. They are stone tools, flakes, and cores. Flakes are detached from the cores or the stone during the process of stone tool manufacture. They are usually discarded or sometimes modified into stone tools. The next artifact that we obtain from the field is stone tools. Stone tools are the most important find from a lithic assemblage as it is the finished product and was used for various purposes such as cutting roots and tubers, crushing bones, cleaning carcasses etc. Let us now look into the basic terminology that is associated with lithic artifacts. Cortex is the original part retained from the stone on a stone tool or a flake. Flake is the part of the stone removed during the manufacture of stone tool by force and the scar left behind is known as a flake scar. The point where the strike was made to remove the flake is known as the point of percussion. The proximal end of the tool is the one that was used to hold the stone tool and has a button to it. The distal side is one which has the working or cutting edge. This is usually sharp and can be easily identified. The dorsal surface is the one which was towards the outside of a core before being detached and it sometimes contains the cortical portion. The ventral surface was the one which was towards the inner side of the core or the stone side usually has a positive or a negative flake scar. Now to begin illustrating a stone tool, we will need a trace paper, a graph paper, pencils, paper clips to attach the trace paper and graph paper and clipboard to keep it all. We will begin by attaching the trace papers to the graph papers using paper clips. To illustrate the dorsal side, keep the artifact on the surface with its proximal end towards the illustrator and the dorsal surface facing upwards. The first step is to draw the outline or the perimeter. To draw the outline of a stone tool, keep a pencil vertical to the edge of the tool and move it around the perimeter marking dots. Make sure to keep the pencil perpendicular to the edge of the tool. The dots should be marked around the border and lines should be used to represent scars wherever present on the perimeter. This will be helpful while drawing the inner portion of the stone tool. To complete drawing the perimeter, 
of the stone tool, join the dots. And this gives us the perimeter of the dorsal surface. Let us move towards drawing the flake and flake scars. I have already drawn the perimeter here. Now demarcate the scar lines on the artifact with the chalk. It helps to highlight the ridges and then they can be drawn easily. To draw the inner portion, choose one of the scar lines you have marked on the perimeter as a reference point. Then using a compass, measure the distance and plot it on the sheet. Repeat this with another scar line from the perimeter as a reference point but the point to be drawn is kept the same. This will give us the position of the point that we need on the illustration sheet. Repeat the procedure for all the points on your stone tool. After you have completed all the points, join all the lines to complete the skeleton of the stone tool. Now that we have a skeleton, we will move towards representing the flake and the cortex. We have our illustration and stone tool on the same plane. This part here as you can see is from the original part of the stone or the cortical part. This part is drawn as dots. As you can see here clearly, the cortical portion is drawn as a number of dots. Your flake scars are represented with lines that begin from the point of percussion and in the direction the force was applied. These lines are concentrated where the gradient is T. And in case the flake has a gentler slope, the lines are further apart, just like how contour lines work. Let us apply this to a stone tool. On this particular flake scar, the gradient is steep, hence the lines would be closer and as the point of percussion is somewhere here, was removed by applying a hit here. You can see the ripple marks coming out. So we will draw the lines like these.
When compared to this flake, the gradient here is more gentle. Hence, here the lines will be more apart. The point of percussion for this car is here, hence we will draw the lines from here. The lines here will be a bit apart from what we drew earlier. Repeat this for all the scars on the tool and we will have a complete illustration of our dorsal side. Now let us move towards the illustration of our ventral side. As you can see on this particular side we have a bulb of percussion. It looks somewhat like a mount and has a convex character. This is also known as a positive flake scar. As you can see here this was the point where the blow was made and ripple marks can be seen moving out of it. This part is known as the bulb of percussion. The illustration would start by keeping the proximal end towards the illustrator and the process of drawing the perimeter would be the same as we did in the case of a dorsal side. The flakes would be drawn again using a compass and reference points from the perimeter. The pulp of percussion here is represented by straight lines in the direction of force to represent the ripple marks. The other flake scars are represented by the lines we did earlier in case of the dorsal surface. Now, let us move towards the side profile. The representation of the side profile helps us insights into the thick section of the tool and the working edge of the tool. The process begins by drawing the perimeter as we have done before. And this will give us the side profile of our stone tool. This was all about the basis of lithic illustration. Thank you.